and a very good day to you. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. My name is Father Joseph Campo. I'm the rector of St. John's Episcopal Parish in South Salem, New York. So whether you were a member of St. John's Parish or of St. Paul's Chapel in Vista or St. Andrew's in Hartsdale, I understand there are members who are worshiping with us from there, or friends of mine and from Canada and from England who have also joined in this celebration, and wherever you are, welcome. And I hope these uh, online liturgies will be an experience of prayer, uh, of your being spiritually fed, and an opportunity to be in the presence of God wherever you are, even if you cannot be in a house of worship for the next several weeks as we work our way through this epidemic. I want to also let you know that on Wednesday evenings, uh, we have a conference call and a telephone evening prayer that we have set up. And if you're interested in that, um, I invite you to go to our website or go to the parish email information that you'll be given, and you can uh, follow along there. And um, just to let you know, we have been helping out the Katona Food Pantry over the course of these weeks. We have food bought by our parishioners and they place it in the outside bin that is available 24-7 to anyone in need of food. And when, uh, what I do is I bring extra food down to the Katona Pantry on a regular basis. Um, but there's always some food available for those in need. So please feel free to make use of this if you need to. Finally, I'd love to know who you are, especially if you're visiting, uh, so to speak, um, and searching. If you're not a member of this particular parish, contact our parish by email. Let us know who you are. Let us know how we can better serve you, what you're looking for in terms of being spiritually fed at this time. Thank you, God bless you, and welcome to our liturgy. And good day, everyone. This is the celebration of the weekend of June 21st. This is the third Sunday within the season of Pentecost. It's also Father's Day. It's also a day that the Anglican churches throughout the world pray for the peace in Jerusalem. And obviously, we as Americans have so much to pray for in terms of racial reconciliation and racial justice and 
praying for the Lord's safety as we deal with the new reality of this virus and what it is doing. So we come together, we pray for each other, we hold each other up, and we offer our thoughts and our prayers for one another. So let us pray. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So let us prepare to listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the first reading will be a moment of silent reflection. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him.
by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Finally, the gospel today is taken from the gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the eleven apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor is a servant above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the servant like the master. They call the master of the household Beelzebub, how much will they call and malign those of the household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing is secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell it in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather. Fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of far more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think I have come to bring peace to earth. I have come not to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh my, what an incredibly difficult passage of Scripture to read. It's going to change your notions, it's going to change some of the ideas that we kind of bandy about, and I hope it does, I hope it gives you something to think about. It's difficult to preach upon, but it is so important to preach upon. And of course, I don't preach only to you, I preach primarily to myself. So I ask you a question. What are you afraid of? What are your most secret, hidden fears? You know, there's a lot to be afraid of today. We're looking at a social upheaval long overdue, and people are afraid. We are exposed to something so tiny we cannot see, and yet it kills. And one should be afraid. Hollywood makes a lot of money 
capital, capitalizing on people's fears, exploiting those fears. We pay money to go be scared. There have been films of monsters and horror creatures since there have been films, okay? Um, TV programs, so many things that one can win money at, provided that you completely expose yourself and make yourself vulnerable to fears. So many incredible, stupid programs. Even now I understand there's a couple that I've just recently discovered because I've been scanning TV. i be honest with you, I haven't watched them, so if I'm being critical, it's probably not fair. But, you know, you can uh, crawl into a coffin containing all sorts of worms and bugs, or you can hang by your toes from a helicopter and be exposed over a volcano that's spewing forth poisonous gas and red-hot lava. Um, there's something new called Naked and Afraid, and I, oh, I'm, I'm afraid to think of what that might even be. Think of things in the news, you should be afraid. And we have the most ama amazing names for our fears, don't we? We have agoraphobia, and claustrophobia, and arachnophobia. We have so many things that we are afraid of. As a matter of fact, there is something referred to as archibuterophobia. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, except to give you a hint. It has something to do with this, okay? And you can go look it up if you wish to, uh, to, to figure out what that fear is. So what are you afraid of? And as a Christian, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of death? Are you afraid of judgment? Are you afraid of Satan? Are you afraid of hell? Jesus teaches in this very poignant moment in his own earthly journey, don't be afraid of those who kill the body but can't kill the soul. But he says very pointedly, rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Those are his words, all right? And let me try to paraphrase that the way a professor of mine tried to explain it to me. Very simply, save your fear for God, who holds your entire life, your body and soul, in God's hands. You know, there's a portion of the Christian tradition that highlights the majesty of God and the respect we ought to have for God, what is referred to as reverential fear, that God does not, should not be disrespected, although God often is. The idea of God is my pal. God is going to accept me no matter how I am, no matter who I hurt, because God has to love me all the time. And that's not what Jesus said. That's not our Christian tradition. That's not the Judeo-Christian tradition. Christ as God is to be treated with respect. God is to be treated with respect. You know, we come to, to church here in these many months that I have been doing this service. One of the sadness for me is, is the fact that this is an empty building. You cannot see behind the camera. And yet I am reminded every time I come into this empty shell of a building that this is sacred space. This is holy ground. I'm reminded of that passage that we all learned when we were children in, 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 uh, in Sunday school, Moses being told to take off your shoes when he's staring at this burning bush. You're standing on holy ground. You're in the presence of God. God is important. And God should not be disrespected. So what is fear of God all about? Is it about terror? Is it about bringing back judgment and making you fear God to the point that you're going to live your life because you're afraid? No, it's not about that at all. And anyone who tells you it's about that, then they have no understanding of the scriptures, and quite frankly, they shouldn't be preaching. But what it does tell us is something that you as a parent, those of you who are parents, or those of you who have memories or have seen this happen to little children, you can identify with this. How many times do you have the toddler who is told, don't touch the stove, it's hot. Don't touch the cup, it's hot. And you try to protect them from hurting themselves, but being independent little things that they are, of course, they're insisting on doing it their way because they need the experience. And ultimately, because they don't listen to the loving warnings of a parent, they get burned. The purpose is not about fear. The purpose is about respect for someone or something that is so far greater than you. Our American culture has an ideal, and the ideal in, in one sense is good, self-determination. Be responsible for yourself. But individualism also has a price to pay because you're not the center of the universe. You and I are not the sum total of all that is intended to be worshipped and adored. Only God is. And 
We don't want to submit to authority that's thought to be weakness. Well, guess what? Submitting to God is not weakness. Making God our priority is not weakness. Making Jesus our priority is not weakness. And whoever does not walk with him and take up his cross and follow him, he is not going to be there for us because we will have gone on a separate journey all on our own. And when we turn around, we're going to find ourselves exactly where we want to be, utterly alone and abandoned because we've chosen to be abandoned. Jesus has called his disciples and he has sent them out. Be witnesses, preach, teach, heal. And if the culture and the authorities of this world persecuted him, the culture and the authorities of this world may very well turn on us. And that's what it means to be a Christian. If Jesus was ignored or hated or made fun of and ultimately killed, don't be surprised if you're faithful to him that that is your destiny. That's what we're warned about. He has to be the priority, not even personal family. He alone is our priority, and yet in spite of it all, he says to us, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of anyone who says they can intimidate you or hurt you. Don't be afraid for the loss of this body, because this body is weak, and it's vulnerable, and it has its quirks. And as we get older and older and older, it starts to betray us. And I used to make fun of the priest who used to preach that, and now I'm feeling it myself, and I totally am starting to get it. Don't be afraid, but be respectful. Be in awe of a God who has lived among us and has loved us and gives us a way and a message and a manner of life and a commission to love as he has loved us. Be respectful, be reverent, have what was traditionally in theology referred to as a holy fear of God's awesome presence in your life. Or as Jesus said very simply, save your fears for God, who holds your entire life, body and soul, in his hands. Be in awe of the Father. Be in awe of the power of the Holy Spirit who abides in you and hasn't abided in you from the day you were baptized, who knows us down to the very hairs of our head, no jokes, okay, who cares for us more than he cares for even the most beautiful things of creation. So in a world that is fear-filled and fearful in a world that has some very scary people. May you be a witness. May you be an example. May you be a source of strength. May you have a holy, reverential fear of God. And as the original disciples, so also may we be faithful in our witness. And be when we do, know that God will be faithful to us. So don't be afraid. Amen. For those of you who have a Book of Common Prayer, would you turn to page 358, and together we pray. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers for all those who have been serving us, who have been facing the virus. We pray for Daniel Reardon, Elise Apkin Brandt, Kelly Ross, Marjorie Jean Michelle, Narissa Joyner, Valerie Screlia, Christopher Skayen, Elena Aristede, Ellie Levitt, Aaron Levitt, John Lafata, Barbara Thompson, Kristen Smith, Kimberly Bruin, Caitlin Bruin, Chris Kanechi, Kyler Tompkins, Jackson Shavats, Paul DeMori, Christopher Beckett, Maya Bissonette, Brittany Jordan. Please continue to hold in prayer Diana Brockway Sutherland, Jill Hickey, Michael Appy, Brother Rick, Mike Lafada, Susan Apkin, Katie Fo uh, Foyk, Linda Baker. We're also asked to pray this weekend for peace in Jerusalem, peace in the Middle East. This is referred to in the Anglican Communion as Jerusalem Sunday. So they were sent out to all the churches of the Anglican Communion a prayer for the people of Gaza, which I'll pray at this time. God of peace, whose beloved son was born not far to the east in Bethlehem, we pray for the people of Gaza that they may be assured of your unfailing love. Grant them freedom from fear. Give them hope for a future safe from all harm. In the midst of their sorrow, keep them from despair. For all who are injured in body, mind, or soul, we pray they find healing. For those who have been killed, we pray they find rest. For those who grieve, we pray they find comfort. And for the leaders on all sides, we pray for a renewed will to lay down arms, for the strength to put grievances and wrongs suffered by their people to rest, and for the conviction to embrace a path of reconciliation and peace that preserves the rights and dignity of all your children. Amen. We pray, God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope that you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, 
Unite us in common prayer. Send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord's peace be with each of you. Hi, everyone. It's Peter and Camilla and Byron. Just saying, um, we miss you and we're looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks. And thank you to Father Joe for all his lovely emails and for keeping everybody in touch. See you See soon, you. everybody. Bye. Bye. Begin the liturgy of the table, I would like to acknowledge the people who have been assisting me and those who participated by um, proclaiming the scriptures. Uh, you may have recognized their voices, but if not, the first reading was proclaimed by Sebastian Bates, and he did so from France. The second reading was read by Anna Williams, and she did so from England. And the third reading of the prayers of the people were read by Jennifer Hendren, and she did that from the Kingdom of Connecticut. Let us continue, let us pray. If you have a Book of Common Prayer, I'll be praying Eucharistic Prayer C, which begins on page 369. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. 
Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law and open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he has reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. Therefore we praise you, joining the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, the God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Le Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. And accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus himself taught us how. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God Take them in remembrance. Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. So please join me as we pray our opening collect again, and we pray this is the concluding prayer and the theme of our liturgy. O 
Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. As I have in the past, so I'll continue to bless the food that you may be sharing this day. And for those of you who bring bread and wine, a simple blessing over bread and wine is a reminder, a symbol of the Eucharist, not the Eucharist, but a symbol thereof, as a reminder of who we are as Christians, most importantly when we gather around the Lord's table, breaking bread, sharing His presence. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the fruit of the vine. Grant that we who share this wine, which gladdens our hearts, may share forever the new life of the true vine, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord our God, you bring forth bread from the earth. You make the risen Lord to be for us the bread of life. Grant that we who daily seek this bread, which sustains our bodies, may also hunger for the food of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a blessing over your meal today. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who have given us the risen Savior to be the shepherd of your people. Lead us by him to the springs of living water. Feed us with the food that endures for life eternal. Where with you, O Father, and with the Holy Spirit, he lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And although not liturgical, it is certainly a day of memory because it is Father's Day. And I'd like to offer a prayer of blessing for all those who are fathers and stepfathers and grandfathers, and for those who have taken the role of father as perhaps mentor or in any way. May God bless you. For fathers who have given us life and love, that we may show them love and affection today and all days. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that they may find hope and solace in your never-failing love. For fathers who have died, that God may welcome them into that peaceful place that is without ending. Let us pray. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless those fathers who have taken upon themselves the responsibility of parenting, Bless those who have lost a spouse to death or divorce, who are parenting their children alone. Strengthen them by your love that they may be and become the loving, caring men you have called them to be. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless each of you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Let us not be afraid. Thanks be to God.